Hello everybody in just here and welcome back to Shoki Shoujo Virgin Road episode 11 the penultimate one and uh, now the next episode will be a finale and uh, I can already tell you I haven't had enough <laughs> honestly honestly like there are some series that I'm near finishing and uh, I usually have different feelings regarding uh, every series. Uh, sometimes I feel like, sure, it's all concluded well, but I would still like to see the next season. Um, sometimes, as we're approaching the finale, uh, I feel that, uh, you know, get on with it, finish already, I want to have it behind me. Uh, various feelings appear, but this time, uh, when it comes to Virgin Road, my feelings are even a little bit past the need, the want for a um, uh, for a sequel. It's it's a feeling that this season was really short. Right, like it, it's not a fault of pacing either. It's simply, it really felt like there was maybe six episodes of it. I could have watched more than that. It could have easily been a two core season. Uh, it could have easily been like forty minute episodes, like Helsing Ultimate. Why aren't Why aren't they making anime like that anymore? I don't know. I'd watch forty epi forty minute episodes. Why the fuck not? <laughs> yeah, I definitely haven't had enough. And uh, I hope, I sincerely hope that um, this series, this season is successful, both in the West and uh, mainly in Japan, and that we will see a sequel sooner or later. I really hope that this isn't just your everyday usual um, light novel bait or manga bait or call it what you will, where uh, the anime is just a single season and it's essentially an ad for the source material. I really hope they are going to make it more, make it bigger, make it into a whole franchise, I guess, maybe. I can't really see, like figurines out of this series, but hey, maybe, why not? What do I know? I'm not collecting any. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, generally speaking, uh, I just want more. I haven't had enough, and uh, I have a big, big craving. Uh, but let's not talk about that, let's talk about what happened in the previous episode, because a lot has happened. Like, a lot, a lot. Not quantitatively, but uh, importance-wise, right? The previous episode really felt like that little bit of a breakthrough. That things were slowly brewing, slowly boiling, and someone was skipping the lid on the pot. And it was boiling and boiling and boiling, and in the previous episode that someone just took over the lid and it all exploded. That's essentially how it feels to me. And uh, I cannot wait uh, where it goes. Um, right, speaking of the season as a whole so far, uh, I stumbled upon a review on my anime list. Someone gave this series a 3, citing... Episodes being about nothing as its main fault, and god damn, some people might must hate world building. <laughs> like, sure, there are some anime out there, uh, Skeleton Knight in Another World kind of feels that way, where some episodes could have been entirely skipped because they are genuinely about nothing, or they retread things we've already known for a long time. Uh, but it is absolutely not the case in Virgin Road. Every single episode that, even if it feels like a side quest, there is probably some significance to it. I mean, the pages upon pages of theories I created speak for it for themselves, right? Uh, but yeah, 
back to what happened in previous episodes, sorry that I'm a little bit disheveling my thoughts, but I'm really excited for this series, so you have to forgive me. Uh, in the previous episode, the thing that happened, uh, the boiling point, the explosion, was of course the reveal, the birth, the rebirth, perhaps, of Pandemonium, of the little girl who burst out of Manon's chest. Uh, or rather like abdomen, whatever. Uh, someone told me in the comments that, yet again, uh, the uh, gruesomeness of the scene was severely undertuned in the anime, as is often the case. I mean, I get used to it, sadly. Uh, it was much more gruesome in the uh, original. Mm. There was also some uh, discussion about the motives of Manon, and uh, I agree, I can now see it that Manon was never kind of, kind of sort of like given a choice, like sh there was a lot of things expected of her and she was under pressure of her mother's, she was living in her mother's shadow, right? Everybody was expecting her to be a holder of, um, of the uh, pure concept and whatnot. And this was her act of rebellion, right? I'm going to do things my way, I'm free, even if I die, I die on my own terms, that kind of thinking. And yeah, I can absolutely see that. Uh, someone also pointed out that uh, the Pandemonium uh, might actually be the original um, um, lost one who arrived into this world and <coughs> uh, who created the Pandemonium proper. And uh, Manon somehow managed to escape her, perhaps by allowing her to live within her own body as a way to, <clears throat> I don't know, bypass the limitations of the fog, of the wall of fog, something along those lines. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure, but it would check out that Pandemonium might be the original lost one. There's a question. Uh, as to uh, why she doesn't summon demons, uh, like, just willy-nilly, without any issue, because I would have thought that the if her pure concept is the pure concept of demon or pure concept of evil or whatever you want to call it, she can just point somewhere and summon a group of demons, just like that. Instead, she has to go through the whole song and dance of sacrificing herself to herself, and re resurrecting herself through her sacrifice of herself to herself and summoning demons while she's at it. Uh, very Christian mythology where the god sacrificed himself to himself to forgive himself. <laughs> uh, definitely that kind of a theme. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's still a question, so I'm still not entirely certain what the deal is. Maybe she lost a little bit of her powers, a little bit of her strength. Uh, she lost the ability to speak after all, so maybe she has to regain it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure if Pandemonium really is an enemy in the first place. Like, she didn't feel like it. It was mostly just Meno who antagonized her. And it leaves me leaves me wondering if maybe Meno didn't antagonize her. Maybe Pandemonium would have just joined the party. She would have never summoned the demons and she would be just a more or less normal kid. I don't know. It's uh, a lot of what ifing. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of what ifing. And uh, I really don't know where are we going uh, from there. raspberry and pomegranate because sure the like logical way where uh, we're supposed to go with the story would be that Meno defeats pandemonium but how right how do you defeat someone who's unkillable if you kill them they just summon themselves uh, it's a whole another brand of um, immortality than uh, Akari's case, but it is immortality nonetheless. So uh, 
I'm left wondering if they actually find some bullshit reason, a uh, bullshit way to deal with Pandemonium. Are they gonna throw her behind the uh, wall of fog? Is Akari gonna find some way with her tiny whiny magic to seal Pandemonium in an alternate timeline or whatever bullshit? Or is Pandemonium gonna join us for the journey? The journey to find death, both for Pandemonium and for Akari? I don't know. Uh, I absolutely don't know. And yet another important thing that happened is that Manon, I think she succeeded in sowing just a little bit of a seed of doubt in Meno's head, where Meno was all the time very uh, by the book, right? Very, this is my purpose, I must fulfill it. Uh, no, I, I have no thoughts, head empty, I'm just a weapon, I kill, they tell me to kill, so I kill, very little individual thought. She's changing. She, she is slowly but surely changing, and uh, I look forward uh, to where that change takes her in the end. Uh, I have to check one important thing that I forgot to check before I started recording. Do I have enough space on my disk? I do have 21 gigs. I'm gonna delete some old videos just in case, <laughs> just in case I go overboard. Uh, there we go. Sure, delete six oldest videos. Okay. Uh, now, with that out of the way, we should just watch it. Because we don't, we won't know where it's going until we see where it's going. So, sound, subs, and uh, what's going on, OBS? Are you having a moment? No, OBS isn't having a moment. My phone is having a moment, or rather Droidcam, the app I'm using to connect my phone to my PC to serve as a camera, and there it is. Hopefully it doesn't break during the recording of the video proper. Knock on wood. <laughs> right, sound, subs, and a reminder that you can S support the channel on... Uh, Patreon, link in the description, or by sharing my videos, word of mouth, really counts and really, really matters a lot. So, with that out of the way, with the camera fixed, uh, we can finally watch episode 11 of Shokei Shoujo Virgin Road, the penultimate one, version by subs, please, as usual, and we can start it in 3, 2, 1, go! Yep, it's Pandemonium Chan. And we're starting right where we left off. Oh, the Ivory Hero. Is she a pure concept of chaos or is she a holder of the pure concept of chaos? Can pure concepts have personifications? Or is it simply a case of blanching? Where her memories and her personality and everything was removed and all that was left in her was the pure concept. But she does seem to have quite the personality, so she doesn't seem blanched, does she? Should I zoom out? I'm gonna zoom out a little. <laughs> I wonder if it's another case of confusion being introduced by some translation, maybe not issues, but not entirely accurate translation, uh, where she says that she is, uh, where Meno says that she is the pure concept of chaos, maybe it was... In the original, it translates to something different. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, 
Also, an interesting thought that uh, perhaps all the human errors appeared because someone was actually trying to be a hero, a lost one, and uh, the current perception in history is just a mis misrepresentation of what they did. More demons! Gate of Babylon, except with nails. Yeah. Invoke thread. <laughs> oh no, I have been captured. Whatever shall I do? <laughs> There's more of her. <laughs> and rips off her head. No, just breaks her neck. Red. Hmm. Oh. Of course. Of course, because she's a competitor. Ooh. That's some garbled text. What'd you do? You didn't turn her back in time. Doesn't seem so, at least. So what, did she stop the progression of the poison? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Hmm. And she wanted to create a movie? Yeah. And yeah, important thing someone noticed. Uh, she mentions movies, so she might be a lost one. Entertainment. Yeah, well, else... Not the... yeah, not the goal. True. Someone squeak, squeak, dig here. Another gate to the other world. Hmm. Yep. Remotely. Everybody who ingested Monstrine at one point or another. Yep. Why don't you go and check? Yep, the wall. A classic move. A bell. That's... Uh... Another move that Menno used in the past, and uh, Orwell used it. 
another summon at the price of a hand. No, just making them grow. Making them grow hands! Sure, why not? <laughs> Another gate? No, that was a wall, this is a gate. I love all those architecture-based powers, I gotta say. That's Menos' weakness, though. She has a lot of power, she but not a lot of juice. Yep, exactly. And she can apparently just turn herself into a cartoon character. Gomu Gomu no Fisto. <laughs> Ashuna? Yep. Yep. Pandemonium itself. Everybody who ingested Monstrine. Oh! Right! One life for one summon. Yeah. I mean, at least it's simple. There's no advanced mechanic to it, just kill it enough times. <laughs> cool. Ah, Ashuna and uh, Meno. Invoke slash expansion, yep. Very Theric Sword. Attacking the... The Rift? The other world itself? But Meno can. Okay, what exactly is that move of slashing at the rift? What did it actually do? A brand new seal? Whoa, whoa okay, that's a lot of text. Cathedral. Pseudo church. <laughs> the sound design Probably not Okay, so she's trapped she shot a blue portal, a an orange portal, and just threw her into it. I highly doubt it's the end. Especially now with Akari's help. As I said, highly doubt it's the end. What is it now? A 
a kraken of some sort. A big, huge monster. Oh, hello, Pandemonium Chan. I guess there was another one of her. I, I was afraid for a moment that it's the end, but no. No, it's only halfway point. <laughs> Princess Carrie. Both meanings of Princess Carrie. <laughs> and Pandemonium is still alive. Yeah, not even a pseudo-church managed to stop her. Can't deny that! It's only proper. Probably not. <sighs> oh! Hmm. So perhaps sealing the pandemonium off was a huge mistake if the monsters inside were able to just cannibali cannibalize each other and grow in power. Turning herself into goop again? <laughs> yeah. It seems like Pandemonium's powers go far beyond just being able to summon demons. And that confirms it, she's a lost one. Or maybe it doesn't actually work that way. It's just what the Church of Faust wants you to believe. That confirms one of my theories already. Ah, yeah, Akari being bullied. I like the translation note, by the way. It's a rarity nowadays when it comes to subs, isn't it? Because it keeps crumbling, because Akari resets the timeline, but the pandemonium progresses. She resets the world, but not the pandemonium. Could it be another one of my theories confirmed? <laughs> mm. 
There's what? Hmm. The real one is with Akari. Or is she still sealed? True. Oh. The uh, light that shone on Akari when she was inside. Because it's time. A lo lot of time passed. A lot more time passed for the pandemonium than for the rest of the world. Yes, it does have to do with Akari. Yep. So not quite the way I thought it goes, but more or less. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's an interesting tidbit. She only cares about Menno. Ah, yes, a best friend. Oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> And there go the memories. She can do that? Just turn pandemonium to ash or something? Is the chair pandemonium in disguise? <laughs> uh, can't get rid of her this easily. Astral Archive Astral Archive That's gonna be important Akashic Records Determinism Flair, a different version of Flair. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Thankfully, she has 98 others. To the finale. <clears throat> yep. The classic trope indeed. At least if they defeat her now, she dies. Oh. Oh. 
Not the worst CG I've seen. Not the best. Took me by surprise, that's for sure. The use of CG in this series has been very, very, like, uh, sparingly. CG was used very sparingly in this series so far. I'm gonna have to take a look at it uh, when we go through the episode again to fully form my opinion. <laughs> Oh, it's going places. It's going places. Every time I think I understand it, that I get what a pure concept is, I get what a human error is, I get what the powers do, I get what the magic do, they're like, haha, fuck you, new information. I like it. So far it hasn't overstayed its welcome, because it is entirely possible that constantly shaking up uh, the viewer's understanding of a series can very much get tiring after a while hasn't been the case so far, so perfectly fine by me. I love it. The Duo's Journey, yep. Akari setting off on a journey with Mano. Uh, let me pull out my highlighters. Because. Uh -huh. Akari has bad memories from the original world. Well, I guess she no longer has them, but she did have them. That's a green highlight. <laughs> okay, let's go into full screen view. Okay, and uh, let's continue browsing the theories. Uh, not all of them, of course. Uh... <laughs> Pandemonium Shield Fog is falling apart. It is. It is not for the reasons uh, I thought, but it very much is falling apart. And, uh, yeah, I initially thought that the reason it is falling apart is because simply so much time has passed for the Pandemonium since it wasn't reverted by Akari's powers uh, because she was able to revert the world but not the human errors. It's falling apart because of the creaking and uh, mangling of the world, of the timeline and whatnot that Akari causes. Regardless, it is falling apart, that's for sure. Hmm. A little girl is the isekai girl with concept of evil. Yeah, that's confirmed. Uh, just immortal. I think she's been immortal from the very beginning, or maybe she made she made herself immortal. I don't know. That's not clear yet, so I'm not gonna uh, highlight that part. Mm. Next, Manon and Meno are sisters. Uh, oh no, I thought like of Manon and Pandemonium, that's already not confirmed, or rather completely dis disconfirmed, unconfirmed, I don't know what's the opposite of confirmed. Uh, but yeah, Manon and Meno are sisters, that hasn't been proven, hasn't been dis disproven. Uh, another one is that Manon and Akari have the same mother, again, not proven, not disproven. So I'm not gonna handle those yet. Hmm... Ivory here was the lost one, who was erased from history books to keep the narrative of all lost ones being a scourge. Uh, yeah, that's that's about all the theories that I had that were confirmed. Both. Right? Both. 
one that Pandemonium Shield is falling apart, and the other that uh, Pandemonium is the original lost one. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go through this episode. Let's go through this episode again, shall we? Great. Thank you for allowing me to do that. <laughs> Uh, I really like how they are starting where they left off. Uh, I think I mentioned it during the previous episode. Maybe, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, what I mean by that is, usually it's last time on Dragon Ball Z, then opening, and then it continues. This time it's last time on Dragon Ball Z, continuation from there and then opening, and then further continuation. I And I think I did mention it during the previous episode, uh, where we started with uh, Akari talking with uh, Manon, which was how the previous, previous episode ended, and then we continued from there without any, like, splash screen or opening or anything. I like it. The Ivory One made the fog, not me. Uh, Ivory One... The one who possesses the pure concept of white. The one who was the source for that blob that uh, Orwell wanted to use on Akari. Perhaps was the white one, uh, the one who... Uh, the ivory one was the girl who turned uh, Meno's village white? I don't know, I don't know. Probably. You're simply the pure concept of chaos, then. Is she? She's not the pure concept. She is the wielder of the pure concept. Or is she? Because if she's been blanched, then all that was left is the pure concept itself. But blanching means losing all of memories and losing all of uh, personality and whatnot. And she clearly hasn't lost her memories. She remembers what movies are. And she hasn't lost her personality. She has quite a personality, in fact. So it doesn't seem like she's been blanched. Or is she a personification of a pure concept of chaos somehow? I don't know. Chaos, evil, demon, that's yet another thing that's, I guess, kind of lost in translation. And she just wants uh, entertainment. She just wants to watch a B-class horror movie, slasher. That's all she wants. Very innocent wish, isn't it? Bo... what was it? Like... Blood is my sword, bone is my body, infinite nail works. <laughs> okay, yeah, there is some CG being used, actually. Interest interestingly enough, I don't think those monsters are CG. The nails seem to be, though. And the debris. But it's really not all that visible. I like it. Of all the four major human errors, I'm the weakest. I dread to meet the others in their, like, unconstrained form, because we later learn that Pandemonium really isn't at her best. She's fairly weak compared to what she truly is. She's just a finger puppet. She really is still... Uh, you know, she really is still trapped in the pandemonium behind the fog wall. This is just her sticking a finger through the wall. Terrifying. Terrifying to think of what she could do if she was actually freed fully. And it also gives uh, Akari another limitation, another limiter to how much she can use her powers, right? One of the limits of um, using a pure concept, a uh, limit that might actually stop the wielder of the pure concept from using it, is the fact that each use erases some of your memories. 
So if you don't want to lose your memories, you probably want to use your pure con concept very sparingly. Akari doesn't care much about her memories. She cares about the now spent with Meno. But now she does have a genuine limit. Because if she uses her powers and if she reverts time in the world again, she might not be able to fulfill her goal. Because maybe this time around the pandemonium will be fully cracked open. Maybe Meno will die. And if Akari rewinds time again, well, she's not going to fix that. She's only going to make things worse. Because the pandemonium will crack open even wider. That's... Uh, that's good. That introduces a brand new bit of tension. Limitation to a seemingly unlimited power, or at least a power that's limited by something the wielder of it doesn't care about, now has a limitation that the wielder actually has to care about. I like it. And of course there's more of her. If she can summon herself by sacrificing herself, who's to say she can summon another copy of herself by sacrificing someone else, right? It stands to reason. I like her. I really like Pandemonium-chan. <laughs> I hate you, Momo, but I'm still going to do something for you. Uh, do we see some words of the magic she uses? Etheric Connect Imprecement Pure Concept Time Invoke Regression Hmm. Are the Japanese characters here also some of them are garbled? I don't know, probably. Pure Concept Time Invoke Regression. So she probably wants to regress uh, Meno to, uh, Meno, Momo to the point uh, where she wasn't affected by the poison yet. And now Momo can, Momo took notice of her with blurry vision, sure, but she did. So now Akari knows of Momo, Momo knows of Akari. Question is... Uh, everything, or, well, everything, a lot of the progression of how this series goes forward will bank on whether or not Akari will seal her... Uh, will seal her actual uh, original personality again. Will she again enter the doji commode? Or is she now too far gone into this personality of hers that there is no point reverting? or rather reverting back would be seen as even more suspicious than staying the way she is. Because now Momo saw her this way, Meno saw her this way. So, uh, interesting. Uh, uh, it will be interesting to see what Akari actually does with it. Use man only belt in an attempt to spread monstrine. You infected her bodies to use them as sacrifices for your resurrection. She doesn't care about resurrection. That wasn't the goal. The goal was some entertainment. She likes seeing people fight. She likes seeing people struggle. Because it's fun to see in the movies. When uh, another bunch of stupid teenagers goes to an abandoned hut in the woods. And then uh, tries to survive running away from a mutated mass murderer with chainsaws for hands, right? It's very, you know, B-class entertainment, but entertainment nonetheless. And yeah, she doesn't want to gain anything from it. The goal doesn't matter. She doesn't want to destroy humanity. She doesn't want to kill people. It just so happens that what she wants to witness can cause those things. And what she wants to witness is just a struggle, it's just a movie. There's no gain, there's only the journey. Uh, 
chaos adhesion, pure concept chaos, summons quick squeak dig here. Yeah, she summons rats. Thou shalt know that wall surrounding pious sheep shall never crumble. Yeah, the wall and the bell. Uh, what's the invocation for the bell? Yeah, that's the wall. Oh, we don't see the invocation of the bell. Okay. And she just feeds those rats her hand, and the rats grow legs. Wait. Didn't... Didn't we see some other monster that had some random human legs on it? And I was wondering what the deal is. I think we did, even before Pandemonium was revealed. I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember, but I distinctly remember the fact that we've seen some monster that had human legs on it, just willy-nilly for seemingly no reason. Was it a different series? No, it, it must have been this one. It probably was a foreshadowing to Pandemonium. Huh. Do remind me, if you guys remember, like, which episode was it or whatnot, do remind me, because I, like, I don't want to go uh, through all the previous episodes again just to find it, but I distinctly remember uh, monsters with weird human legs sticking out of them. Time for another invocation. This time of the gate. Kneel before the front gate, for its path leads to the Lord. Triple invocation of scripture magecraft. Hmm. Uh, also, can I just say that I love the effects? on those, like, architecture-based spells. I think I mentioned it during uh, the first episode, when we see um, Menno use them against the uh, guards, the soldiers. I, particularly this time around, when she cast this uh, pseudo-church. Yeah, this pseudo-church. It really made me remember the cathedral from Shield Hero Season 1, and it made me wish that the cathedral was anything like it, because the cathedral in Shield Hero looked, let's be honest, it kind of looked like shit. <laughs> it was just a CG dome. Why? I don't know. It could have been drawn, but they didn't draw it. Whatever. It's been years. You have pretty mediocre third capacity. True. Also, she really has more abilities than just evil or demon or chaos or what have you. Like, she can manipulate her body to this degree. Yeah, in the previous episode, I was, I was asking what's her deal with twisting her head like that and stretching her neck. But... Because her power was supposed to be like demon or evil or chaos. She summons demons. Cool, but she also has gomu gomu powers, apparently. It probably is explained in the source material, don't get me wrong. I have full faith that it is, but uh, it just seems a little odd, is all. And of course, Ashuna to the rescue. Uh, this is interesting, that, yeah, the number of people who ingested Monstrine is the number of lights she has. Makes sense. So we must kill it a hundred times to defeat it. Nice and clear cut. I'm with Ashuna here, and uh, I really like her approach. Cool, hundred lives, perfect. 
I'm glad it's not some complex mechanic. We don't need some uh, special ritual. We don't need to kill it in some particular way. Just kill it a hundred times. I can do that. Simple. Simple enough. I like it. Yet again, I find myself really enjoying Ashuna for how plain, maybe not plain, but how normal she is comparatively, right? There isn't much, like, convoluted depth to her. She doesn't have alternate personality, she doesn't pretend. She's just, which motherfucker needs a pummeling? You? Okay, I'm gonna pummel you. <laughs> that's, that's all she does, and I love it. I love it. Uh, in a series where everybody's some sort of a psychopath, having a character, a very down-to-earth character like Ashuna is very much appreciated. We may be able to take it out in one blow. Using your pseudo-church. This. This I'm not quite getting. Ashuna puts a lot of her power into that rift. That rift hit some sort of a ley line underground. Amassed a lot of power. That power burst out of the rift. And Meno somehow was able to control it. To connect like earth ley line with a sky ley line. And that summoned the pseudo church. I guess maybe Ashuna's role here was to stir up the power in the earth to cause that explosion. And the moment it burst out is where Mena was able to control it. She wasn't able to pull it out of the ground herself. She needed that little bit of a spike to excite the energy underground and make it easier to manipulate. Probably something along those lines. Etheric Connect 1 to full passage invoke. Full, not just bits and pieces. Full passage. Beyond the mountains there was nothing to be found in the plains below. Morning, afternoon, and the night, the exhausted people were at a loss. Blam, blam, a sound echoed, and the people raised their heads. The woman said nothing. Mouth closed, she raised her hand and struck with a hammer. All eyes were focused on the woman. In order to do what must be done, the woman raised her arm. She simply hammered the stake to make known the land where all shall begin. Bam bam bam, pseudo church. I. This is such a fun scene. I think your efforts are victorious. <laughs> Immediately crushed. Uh, and and this her trying to go against the power of it. I don't know. It's very laugh inducing. I guess. And sure, Mano had a good idea. Connect the ether of the earthen vein to the heavenly vein in an endless cycle, and crushed up pandemonium just forever goes between them like an endless loop in portal, basically. What Mano didn't account for, though, is that... It's not the only pandemonium. It's not even the original pandemonium. The original pandemonium is still beyond the wall. But yeah, she proved once that she can have multiple bodies. I guess Meno had to try something, and that was her best shot, but did she really not take into account that there might be other little pandemoniums running around? I don't know. I'm not sure. And of course, a big, big Kraken. 
Princess Carry Princess. And uh, Pandemonium isn't quite impervious to Akari's powers, but bits and pieces of her can be, seemingly. The pure concept of chaos. Why are you getting in my way? She's not. She's not getting in your way. You're getting in her way. Or rather, you're planning to. Pandemonium just wants to see a movie. And if you were there, you would have just solved it instantly. Just finger blast the monster and it freezes in time. And... Okay, finger blast wasn't the best way to put it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> just stop the monster in time. And give Akari and Ashuna an opportunity to attack it. Easy. Easier. Where's the fun in that? Right? The struggle is the fun. If there's no struggle, there's no fun. That's essentially Pandemonium's thinking. Cannibalism. Yeah. I mean, if all sorts of monsters are enclosed in a small little space for hundreds or thousands of years with someone who can summon an endless stream of monsters, what are they to do but to cannibalize each other? And if that happens to make them to make them stronger, well, tough shit, I guess. I may be weak, but you're even weaker. Possibly, yeah. You can't possibly have any memories left? Well, she has. Which is very interesting to me. That she does have her memories, at least some of them. It arose your soul. Yeah, I want to hear about it. I don't want them. Of course, Akari doesn't want those memories. Because she straight out did not have a good time in her original world. Yeah. A vase of, interestingly enough, white lilies. And yes, a vase of, flower, a vase of flowers on a desk is usually for a dead student, i.e. Akari was being bullied. Uh, it appears sometimes in, um, in anime, in, uh, in manga. Uh, yeah, if you see a vase of flowers on the desk of a student that's still alive, that's essentially wishing them death. So, uh, pretty heavy bullying. Why? I don't know, and uh, I doubt we will learn uh, the reason eventually. Could she have been bullied because lesbianism? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it's entirely plausible. I don't know. Seems like an all-girls school? Maybe. Again, I'm not sure. It's just purely and purely my just random theories, because we haven't been told anything about uh, Akari's past, so I'm just completely spitballing here. The world doesn't exist for your sake, we exist for the sake of the world. That's interesting. None of that matters, I just came to thank you, because I was able to escape the fog thanks to you. Yep. It's still sealed within the fog, and so is Pandemonium. Because she's just a puppet. Just a little, little pinky finger poking through the Pandemonium wall, already causing this much chaos, this much destruction, this much death. Akari better not fucking rewind the timeline again. They don't have another ivory hero on hand, I'm afraid, so handling uh, escaped pandemonium would not be easy. They would have to actually summon another ivory hero-like, or they don't have a choice in who they summon, right? They could summon someone in hopes of stopping escaped pandemonium, but they could have summoned someone who possesses the pure concept of BLT sandwich. 
He can make a BLT sandwich appear in thin air, and he can make BLT sandwiches sound real, uh, taste really good, and that's the extent of his powers. Not very useful in fight against pandemonium, right? They would have to keep summoning and summoning and summoning and summoning until they finally summon someone who's able to stand against her. Uh, I wonder what would Faust's stance on it be if the only thing that can stop a lost one, that can stop a pure concept wielder, is another wielder of a pure concept. Do they allow them to exist? Do they not? Was the ivory hero a lost one that was allowed to exist by force because they were needed to seal pandemonium? And once they did seal the pandemonium, they were just quickly dispatched? Maybe. Maybe. I wouldn't put it past, uh, past the force. It has to do with Akari. Yep. I was able to get my pinky out because the world was creaking under the stress and eventually a creaks a holes started appearing and I could even witnessed one of them, the stream of light that she faced when she was inside of the pandemonium. If you want to stay intact, yeah, you've forgotten so much that even your personality has changed. That's interesting, we don't know what personality exactly Akari had before. But that's also a throwback to what we learned about Lost Ones in, um, in like the first episodes. That the more you use your pure concept, the more it shapes you, it shapes your personality and it warps it. Wouldn't surprise me if Akari did eventually get more and more and more warped her personality. Possibly, possibly the only saving grace for her would be her focus on Meno and on her love. Because I'm assuming other um, lost ones are dangerous when it comes to them forgetting themselves and their personality uh, more and more adhering to the pure concept, in that they might focus on personal gain, or on revenge, or on proving themselves to be superior, or other concepts like that. If Akari focuses, focuses on her love for Meno, maybe she wouldn't be this bad of a lost one, right? She wouldn't have the need to directly act against the world, to directly cause mischief and terror. Her only concern would be staying with Meno. Although, on the other hand, she might be warped into a complete and utter yandere. Uh, I even have it noted down somewhere that... Uh, where is it? that Akari might have had a hand in causing... Uh, yeah, Akari caused the, humans, the human errors somehow to destroy the world so that she can be alone with Meno, so that nothing else exists, just her and Meno. Her, her personality could very well be warped in that direction. And that's scary. That's very, very scary. I won't become a human error. And of course, yeah, she manages to turn Pandemonium into dust, but it's just one of her bodies. There's more. There's many, many more. You don't realize you're at a dead end. Yeah, kinda. Kinda, because if she keeps warping the world, well, bad things are going to happen. Things that would stop her from achieving her goals. There's no way out. You're immortal. There's no way to kill you. You won't get your... You won't get the death you dreamt of from hands of Meno. You'll never make it. Your regression means nothing. This is, in, this is interesting. The Astral Archive, the Akashic Records, or whatever you want to call it, 
uh, the memories of this planet and what powers ether, the, ori the origin of the Lord written about in the priestesses' sculptures. There's no way to cheat it. Even up to this point, it's no accident you kept failing. Someone used their power to make sure you failed. Determinism versus having agency. Uh, I have to go back to Manon, how she was all about rebelling against determinism and going for her own agency. But is there really determinism in this world? Has every attempt Akari made really been predicted and foretold? Someone. Flair. Short her flair. Am I be honest? N not getting it. I don't get it. I don't get what flair might might have to do with it. It's probably that person who keeps getting in your way. Maybe it's like Akari uh, reminding. Re remembering the previous iterations and how it was always uh, Flair that followed her plans. The scene when, uh, with the uh, Sword of Salt, when Flair was uh, uh, carrying it, uh, the fight of Meno against Flair. Could it be that the way all of the iterations, or maybe most of the iterations that Akari caused, ended because of Flair? But what would make Flair this significant, really? I don't know, I don't know. I can only completely spitball here, and uh, I don't want to. Because I have absolutely no, like, basis to even speculate on why Flair might be this important here. It exists. Way back to Japan. And yeah, there is yet another reason why I have to kill her as soon as possible. Because if she warps the world even more with her timey-wimey shenanigans, what else might happen? Could the Star Husk expand? Maybe. Uh, could the Sword of Salt grow in power? Maybe. Those things could happen. Could the Pandemonium crack even wider? Maybe. Probably. It already cracked. The classic ending trope, all the sacrifices, all 100 lives in a single monster. That makes things a little easier, because if they defeat her now, they defeat her for good. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, uh, the CG. The CG. I think I have to really just repeat what I already said. Not the best, not the worst. I like how it adheres to the rule of a maximum of three colors. Right? Notice the belly scales, how there is only high, only base color and shadow. And even on her outer scales, scales, only base color and shadow everywhere, just base color and shadow. On her hands, there's base color, shadow, and a highlight, so that's a maximum of three colors. Uh, there isn't any uh, gradients being used particularly egregiously on her hands, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, there isn't any shadow gradients or highlight gradients, that's important. It's animated on two, so that's perfectly fine. You know what? I'm fine with this kind of CG. As long as it's not particularly egregious further down the line, it's fine. It's fine. Certainly better than the likes of, I don't know, uh, Spirit Tortoise in Shield Hero Season 2, or uh, CG used in some points in uh, Skeleton Knight in Another World. Although the CG in Skeleton Knight is actually decent, it's the drone elements that are falling down, but 
I digress. Decent enough. I'm not, I'm not mad, I'm not angry uh, at the way it is. Oddly enough, I don't have any new theories to include, so that's interesting. And the title of the next episode is A Journey of Two or something like that. Yeah? Come on. There it is. The Duo's Journey. That is the title, so I'm assuming it's just Akari setting off on the road with Meno again. Ah. That... That was a cool episode. It really prepares us for the big finale. And uh, before the big finale has a chance to occur, it establishes some big important things as well. I like it. I like how it paces itself. Um, very often you have a situation where new information is mostly revealed like during the very finale, right? The big bad is slowly dying and dissolving and the last words are the sky atlas is the key and the big bad dies and everybody's like oh yes of course the sky atlas or whatever in here in this case they're pacing the new information and i like it i like how there aren't any info dumps right? There is in the case where it's a single episode that dumps all of the information we need, and then it's time for adventure. Then it's info dump, time for adventure. Everything flows very smoothly together. I, I believe I already noted it uh, during one of the previous episodes, how this series seems to mostly elude the standard classic formula, even in that there aren't really any downtime episodes, any like honest downtime episodes. Uh, usually the formula is that the tension rises, there is the resolution of that tension, it drops down, there's a downtime episode so that everybody has a time to rest, to process what just happened, and then the tension rises again. In this case, there is more or less constant tension. There isn't a pure um, pure downtime episode where Akari and Mena would just go around the town having fun with maybe Momo and Ashuna playing haha funny stalkers following them because Momo has a hunch that it might be a date and Ashuna just wants to have fun, so she joins Momo, because why the fuck not? Right? Th there isn't anything like that. I like it. Uh, on one hand, it's... That constant tension can be tiring, but I think they're skirting the line between tiring and uh, fine, I guess, pretty damn well. I haven't really found myself wishing that there was a downtime episode. Mm. What else is there to mention about this episode in particular? Hmm. Yeah, I think the this series might change, or rather not the series, but the story the travel, the journey might change the goal a little bit with the reveal of the information that there is a way to go back to Japan. Could it be that Akari's goal will now be to go back to Japan? Probably not. She doesn't have the greatest memories of it. Could it be that Meno eventually learns of it? And she decides that the best way to get rid of Akari is just send her back to her own world. Could it have a wider, wider, um, wider effect on the world itself if the road back to Japan is 
fairly easy. Maybe they can just send those people, send the lost ones back to Japan every time instead of killing them. It's a possibility. Yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, the fact that uh, Akari's powers have such widely reaching effects, such widely reaching uh, repercussions, really, that's also very interesting. As I mentioned, it introduces a brand new limitation to it, but also makes you wonder what else changed because Akari kept reverting the world, right? Did it have some effect on the Star Husk? Did it have some effect on the Sword of Salt? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Did it change anything else? We don't know that. We have absolutely no clue. Maybe it weakened the shield, the shell of this world or whatever. Maybe it's going to be easier to summon other lost ones now. Maybe more lost ones will just start spontaneously appearing here. That's also possible. I'm just like completely spitballing here. We haven't been led to believe that it is the case, but it might be. There might be very widely reaching um, consequences of what Akari is doing. Uh, one question that I really have after this episode is what's the deal with Flair exactly? We know that she's uh, Mano's mentor, but it never was hinted at her being anything more, any sort of like a last boss or anything of the sort. Like, sure, it's been hinted at in the OP, right? Uh, uh, Mano standing up to Flair. Um, Akari and Meno cowering before the sort of soul that uh, Flair carries, that kind of stuff, but it hasn't been foreshadowed in the story itself that Flair might be important. And I wonder how will she be important and why? That's really the bigger, the bigger question here. Why? What does Flair have to do with Akari and Meno? Will Meno rebel against the Faust and will she try to run away with Akari to find a better life? And Flair will be sent after them? Maybe. Will Flair decide that uh, Meno is taking her sweet time so she wants to take care of Akari herself? And Menno will be like, no, the only one who can kill Akari is me. And we're gonna have that sort of a tension, that sort of a duel, maybe. Another bit of a question, another big question, really, that we haven't had any hint at. And I like it. I really like the pacing of questions and answers here. And uh, I really like the fact that every time you think you know everything there is to know, there's just that one more bit that appears, that's like, haha, you thought you know everything, well, you don't know shit. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna end it here, uh, an hour, 23 minutes, that should do it. So now, you guys, you tell me in the comments, what did you think of this episode, of my reaction, of my theories, uh, if there's been something that was omitted compared to the source material, I'm gonna leave it at your discretion, whether to tell me or not, as long as it's not a spoiler, I'm perfectly fine with you, you know, enhancing my experience, um, adding stuff that was omitted or did differently or translated differently or stuff like that. Uh, but please, 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 I beg of you, refrain yourself, yourselves from posting spoilers. If you do want to talk spoilers, the place to do that is my Discord. You can join it here or link in the description. And uh, there's a Virgin Road channel there, and you can use spoiler tags and talk about spoilers there freely, because I don't open spoilers. Uh, what's next? Like this video. If you liked it, disliked it, if you disliked it. But tell me why, so I can improve. Subscribe to the channel to be notified of future releases, not only of Virgin Road, but also Symphon Gear G. Uh, review Starlight, that's nearing its finale soon, and I'm super fucking hyped for it. Um, Spy X Family, Skeleton Knight in Another World, and uh, Tatanusha Nonariagari Season 2, Shield Hero Season 2. 
that's my current lineup, and I also have more videos about other anime in the archive in on my channel, so click it and uh, watch the VODs, they're cool, I highly recommend. And uh, if you want to support my channel, you can do that monetarily on Patreon, link in the description for 10 bucks a month to get early access to non-seasonal shows like Symphogear G and uh, Review Starlight this time around. And uh, for just a dollar, you get access to a role on my Discord server, and you also get to be in the credits of every single video I make. And of course, you can also support me without spending a single cent by just sharing my videos, spreading the word that, hey, there's this dude making the videos of this kind, maybe you're gonna like him. Hey, I see you're rewatching. You're planning to rewatch Symphogear. I'm gonna link you this dude who reacts to it. Maybe you're gonna like it. You know that kind of stuff. Word of mouth really, really matters a lot. What else? Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, Patreon, Discord. You can join it. It's free, open to everybody. And uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it. I think I shield what needed to be shield. Uh, so right now. That's gonna be it from me for today, so as always, you guys do all the good stuff, and uh, I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers! And here is the list of patrons I mentioned, here's the credits, and you can join this merry bunch.